For our final science understanding, this is about ion chromatography. This is also known as ion exchange chromatography. It is used to remove either cations or anions from a mixture by replacing them with ions of another type. We need to explain using equilibrium principles how ions attached to the surface of resin can be exchanged with ions in aqueous solutions. These ideas on equilibrium we're going to cover more so in subtopic 2.2, equilibrium and yield, but I'll give you a bit of an intro to it. Ion chromatography has, again, very similar principles to column chromatography, to HPLC, to gas chromatography. In this case, it utilizes the electrostatic attraction or repulsion between ions or potentially polar molecules. Examples of where it's used is in protein analysis and measuring ion concentrations in water or in solutions. We can break this down into two types, anion exchange and cation exchange. This diagram should look very similar to the others that we've mentioned just prior to this. We'll start off and talk about our ion exchange column. So this is packed with porous resin beads, which act as our stationary phase. Our mobile phase, or our eluent, will pass through the column. And as it does this, it will attach ions onto the surface of the resin beads, which is our stationary phase. We then inject our sample at a certain location, and ions of interest in our sample will exchange places and adsorb to the stationary phase to varying degrees. The rate of this movement depends on the type, the magnitude of charge, the distribution of charge, and what we call the charge density. This diagram here is an example of cation exchange ion chromatography. Over to the left we can see these blue uh, beads here which are our ion exchange resin beads. These beads consist of negatively charged ions attached to the surface of them. From here we have positively charged ions that bond to the surface of resin which have come from our solution or from our mobile phase. We then look at injecting our sample from the top and the components are going to exchange positions with ions that were previously adsorbed. So because this is cation exchange, we're going to get mostly positively charged ions exchanging places with those previously um, adsorbed from the mobile phase. In this diagram to the right, you can see that primarily negatively charged ions are going to want to just flow through. So this will be effective more so for positively charged ions. And they will uh, adsorb to varying degrees based on the, their size, their charge, their charge density, charge distribution. In this diagram, this shows you an example of anion exchange ion chromatography. So we've got our resin here which is coated in positive charge. It is going to allow for the adsorption of negatively charged ions which might be found in our mobile phase. We then inject our sample which can consist of anions and these anions can displace those ions from the mobile phase and adsorb onto the surface of our resin beads here. However because we are constantly supplying our mobile phase this is going to allow for the ions in the mobile phase to do the same thing and we get this repeating process happening where the ions in our mixture, in our component, can essentially be displaced um, and they can then cause displacement and adsorb. So it's like adsorb, desorb, adsorb, desorb, and this can uh, happen to varying degrees based on the nature of those anions. This could be explained using this example equation here. So imagine that we have hydroxide ions that are previously adsorbed to the surface of the resin. So this could come from our mobile phase. Along comes the components of our mixture, which can consist of nitrate ions. And this could allow for the displacement of hydroxide ions from the resin, so that the hydroxide goes into solution here. And the nitrate ions now adsorb to the surface of this positively charged resin bead. That process can essentially reverse, and it can just go back and forth constantly. Here is an example of a chromatogram for ion exchange chromatography. So in this case, we can see it's a cation exchange ion chromatography. 
because each of these six components would be positively charged ions. We can see that lithium has the shortest retention time, meaning it's formed the weakest interactions with the stationary phase. Calcium has the longest retention time, meaning it's formed the strongest um, interactions with the stationary phase, or in other words, it's more strongly absorbed than all the other ions themselves. We're going to now link into this um, point here, explain using equilibrium principles how ions attached to the surface of resin can be exchanged with ions in aqueous solution. So the key thing is to understand these equilibrium principles. I've given you another example equation here. So we've got sodium ions attached to the resin. We've got ammonium ions in solution, maybe from your mixture. And this reaction can result in sodium ions being removed from the resin and ammonium ions being adsorbed onto the resin itself. We say that the cations that are adsorbed to the re resin are in equilibrium with the cations in solution. We use what we call Lichtertelier's principle to explain the ability for these ions to exchange places. In order for Lichtertelier's principle to, to work, we say a system must be in a state of dynamic equilibrium, which is a state of balance. The word dynamic means that things are constantly happening, but overall there is no change. That's until we place a stress on the system. And when we do, the equilibrium is going to shift to try and offset or counteract that stress. We can say that the equilibrium will shift either to the left, which will favour the reverse reaction, or to the right, which will favour the forward reaction. And this occurs until you re-establish your equilibrium. Let's apply that understanding to this example here. So let's say prior to injecting our sample of interest, we have sodium ions that are adsorbed to the resin surface, this coming from our mobile phase. We then inject our sample, and what this does is it increases the concentration of ammonium ions in solution. So that's this component here. We say this affects the system in equilibrium, and the system is going to act to offset this increase in concentration by favouring the reaction that is going to do the exact opposite, that is, decrease the concentration of it. We can therefore say that equilibrium is going to shift to the right, because we're going to have more ammonium ions in solution that are now going to be adsorbed to the surface of the resin. So ammonium ions adsorbed to the surface, and that means that the sodium that was previously adsorbed will then go into solution. So this is allowing for that exchange process to take place. We can look at the opposite scenario. So if we were to flood the resin column with a concentrated sodium solution, which would be our mobile phase, this will allow the sample to be eluted and removed from the column. This is because the concentration of sodium ions is going to be very high. The concentration is going to be increased um, over this side here. We can say using Lichtertelier's principle, the system in equilibrium will act to offset the stress by favouring the reaction that will decrease the concentration of sodium ions in solution. So it, it is going to favour this reverse or back reaction, and we say equilibrium is going to shift to the left. As a result, we're going to get more sodium ions in solution, adsorbed to the surface of the resin, and the ammonium ions which were adsorbed to the resin are going to go back into solution. And this process is just going to continue until the sample is eluted from the column. Hopefully after watching these videos, you understand the principles of chromatography and you know how to apply this knowledge and understanding in various scenarios. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.